Well, thank you for joining Growing Perspectives with Kaisha. I'm very excited today to have two guests representing Chesterfield County government, as well as sharing their personal and professional backgrounds. And they are Dr. James Worsley and Kim Conley. And I'm really pumped for them to share their story with you. I met both of them a couple of years ago um, through the Chesterfield Chamber of Commerce. And we are all very active in the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. So I'm going to ask them some questions about their background, get to know more about Chesterfield County government, and just government jobs in general. So before we get started, I would ask each of you if you could share with us your current role, introduce yourself, and then tell us how you got to your current role. So a little bit about your career path. So either one of you can start. Go ahead, Kim. All right. Good um, good, good morning, Kaisha. Thank you for the opportunity to share um, with you all about Chesterville County and my role and the impact that I've had with Chesterville County. I am Kimberly Conley. I am the Assistant Director for Community Engagement and Resources with Chesterville County, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And fortunate enough, I have been an uh, employee with the county, and I'm proud and fortunate to be an employee with the county for more than 30 years. I started um, as a kid with pigtails, um, hats on my head. No, I'm just joking. I started early um, as an intern when I was at the, v the Virginia State University as a marketing major. Um, uh, so I started here just for a nine-week program at that time the county had what was called the minor Minority Internship Program. And I worked in administration um, for that, that time period, the eight, week, eight to nine week time period. And then um, the director I had at that time, who was a deputy county administrator, says, stay on until you know you finish your classes. That's, I have some projects I want you to continue. So I was able to continue with, um, with Chesterfield County while at Virginia State University. And then I was able to um, have a, um, be promoted, I guess, from an intern and a part-time position to a full-time position here with Chesterfield County. So I've served as um, research analyst, um, government, government affairs coordinator, um, special assistant to the board and community affairs. And now I'm um, assistant director for um, community engagement and resources. So it's been a fun journey working for Chesterfield County. And I have, I'm a native of Chesterfield County. So to be able to give back to my community has been well worth the ride and the journey of being an employee of Chesterfield. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And over 30 years. It's awesome. Dr. Worsley. Yeah. So as you can see, Kim has a outstanding um, legacy with Chesterfield County. So I'm just uh, gracious uh, and feel honored to be in her company on this morning and you as well, Kaisha. So thank you for having both of us on um, your show. It's a privilege to be here. So my my journey in Chesterfield County um, is, is roundabout, so to speak. And so I'll kind of elaborate a little bit about that. I currently serve as the Deputy County Administrator um, here in Chesterfield County, um, but I, I did start in this position. I joined Chesterfield County in 2016 um, as the Director of the Parks and Recreation Department. And in 2020, um, after one of our Deputy County Administrators retired, um, I was fortunate enough um, to interview and receive the promotion to become the deputy county administrator over all of human services for the county. Um, but before that, I mean, that it took a lot to get to this point. Um, so I'll backtrack just a little bit. Um, I'm a graduate of um, University of North Carolina in Greensboro. Um, I have my undergrads in, in rec, as a rec therapist. So I, for 20 years, I served as a, a recreation therapist. Um, working in with older adults, working with folks with Alzheimer's, um, working with people with other disabilities, as well as in mental health um, in another jurisdiction in Lexington, North Carolina, um, as well for Davidson County Mental Health Department. And so I've worked in Charlotte, North Carolina with, with Mecklenburg County um, in the Parks and Recreation Department, working with individuals that were homeless and building programs, direct programs to um, in in the when I say direct programs, I'm, I'm referring to um, leisure type programs, um, things that people in the community could benefit from. Uh, wh whether you're talking about um, arts arts programs or literacy programs, um, 
trips, um, after school programs, all sorts of things like that. When I did direct services um, in my early early years of a direct as a direct programmer and therapist for Mecklenburg County, and then in Mecklenburg County, I gradually moved up the ranks um, into more management type positions, overseeing um, facilities and parks and um, and leading um, larger staff. And when I left Mecklenburg County in 2011. Um, I was overseeing a third of the park system uh, there um, as a as a regional manager, and I left Mecklenburg County to, in 2011 to go on to um, Columbus, Georgia, where I became the, the director of Parks and Recreation in Columbus, Georgia, um, from 2011 to 2016 before coming to Chesterfield County. And one of the things that I'm very proud to say that we were able in Columbus, Georgia, to become nationally accredited through the accrediting body for um, the Parks and Recreation Department system as well as when Mecklenburg, in, excuse me, in Columbus, uh, Georgia, moving to Chesterfield County, um, the team here, we all, we're also able to become a nationally accredited, uh, which is no small feat. We were uh, it was over a two-year um, journey to make that happen. So we're just very excited to be here now in the, de in the deputy county administrator role, working with phenomenal folks um, in, hum in the human services field, uh, from social services and mental health, um, to Kim and then their newly um, Department of Community Engagement um, and Resources and so many other wonderful people here in Chesterfield County. So I'll pause there. I know you have some other questions, but that's just kind of how I got to where I am today. Um, but I would be remiss if I didn't say this journey um, so far. I didn't get here by myself. I, I luckily have a, a spouse of, of the last 20 years that has been on this roller coaster ride of a journey of career with me. Um, um, Tara Worsley, and we have three children, um, Lily, and James, and Bryce, who are in Chesterville County Public Schools. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you both. I loved hearing your backgrounds. I loved hearing the different transitions that you made, whether location, job functions, and the different opportunities that you had as you continue to progress in your careers. So I want to ask you about um, what have been the key success factors for your career and professional growth? Kim, do you want me to go first this time or you want to go first? Okay. I'll let, um, I'll, I'll go first. I think that's a, gr a great question. And I'm going to, I'm going to sum it up as best I know how, and I'm going to say um, people. And what, by that, I mean, being around and surrounding yourself with great people. Um, no one person can do anything by themselves and do it well. Um, you know, there's a, you know, there's a, there's an old um, uh, African saying, you know, if you want to go fast, go along, but if you want to go far, um, you know, go with others, so to speak. And so one of the things I have I learned along the way, I surround myself with mentors, mentors that will um, help me and encourage me. Um, and it's not always, you don't necessarily want a mentor is going to tell you all that you want to hear, you think you're doing right. You need someone that is going to give you some critical feedback uh, that is going to give you things, even though you may not necessarily want to hear, but in the long run, it's for the benefit of you to, to grow and then take that and pass it along to others. So, you know, it's kind of like you, you're, you're building um, others up as you, as you move along the way. Um, and so that's probably the most critical piece of advice that I've received in my career. And when I continue, I still try to give back to others as I mentor as well. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with um, Dr. Worsley. I, I often say mentors, being a mentee. Um, for me, my key success is learning the, the willingness to learn, open-mindedness, um, just being able to be open-minded, um, learn as much as you can, um, surround yourself with great people, people who have strengths that you don't have. Um, that's been my key. I have learned a lot from leaders, peers, community advocates on, you know, just how to go about the daily business and how to give back and be trusted in the community. And, and building the trust in the community is one of my my staples of the keys to success. It's just being being that 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 go to that confidant and just connecting with a number of people. I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for many people, individuals, be it the community, be it the edu my teachers within the Chester County Public School System, in addition to some of my peers 
helped me to gain the leverage that I have now with being able to support me. So I say people, it would be the key resource to being successful in this um, go- local government journey. That's awesome. Thank you. And if I could just add one more thing, Kaisha, to um, this piggybacking on Kim, I, I, I heard her use the word education. You know, that's very important as, as well, you know, to get where we are, you know, is not by accident, but it's certainly in addition to working with people, there are resources that we have to equip ourselves with. And so whether that means going back to school, which, um, you know, Kim and I both have in our careers, um, going from undergrad to graduate school and then um, to a terminal degree, but lots of information is captured in in books and and articles and those type of things and um and you must avail yourself uh, to those those things you know you see behind me you know, the bookcase and so over the years you know collecting books and and uh, learning more about um things that i have interest in whether regarding leadership and management and you know organization development and how people go get, get along and you know what you know customer service you know the, there's a book that i received recently um, from a banker, and um, I, I'm just start. I just start to read it, and it's really, really interesting. It's um, it's called uh, the Lessons from the Mouse, um, and it's um, it's a Disney it's a Disney book, um, really about customer service of how this person's perspective of lessons that they learned while working at Disney because Disney's known for a great customer service. The author is Dennis Snow. and so it's a great book that I'm I'm really you know, enjoying, and, and I can see how even in just this book, but other books, nuggets that you learn along, learn along the way in those books, applying it to your um, your walk and your journey and then sharing that with others really has been, I think, another component of success in um, my career. Awesome. That's awesome. I definitely heard the themes of continuing to learn, continuing to develop, and people, the power of connections and people and relationships. So I'm going to ask you a few questions related to government. Um, So I'm curious about what led you to decide to work in county government? I love the smiles on both of your faces. So Dr. Worsley, I'm going to start with this one. So let me just share, Kaisha and Dr. Worsley. Local government was not on my radar. I graduated from high school. I attended Virginia State University. My degree is in marketing management. Corporate corporate America was where I was destined to go. And I say this because local government, public service, I'm a giving heart type person, love to get back in the community, but never connected my career path or journey with um, public service or local government. So I had to, um, and oddly enough, I initially wanted to be a nurse because my family had a number of nurses. Then I decided I wanted marketing management. You can market and manage anything with that degree. So I said I would go there and then I would have versatility in what I wanted to do in, in any arena. But I was I had to have, a, I, in my program, I needed an internship. So there were opportunities out there and um the, the person by the name of Baxendo Bax, which is a family member, uh, connected to my family, worked at Virginia State University in career development. And he talked about how Chesterfield County has great opportunities and they have these internships available. You should really try. You should just go out for it. I said, oh, fine. No worries. I'll get to know, know a little bit more about the community in which I live from a government standpoint. Not a problem. I was able to, um, fortunately, be able to have an internship and really love the work of local government because it gave me the opportunity to work on projects that impacted my community, where I live, my backyard, my neighbor's backyard, my family member's backyards. And so local government was a total shift for me in college of being doing the public service work. So when I say that I intend to be in public service, no. Have I enjoyed my journey, the stepping stones, the people that I have met? Um, I there was an older gentleman who was a professor at Virginia State University. Once I had my internship, he would come and visit me every year, Dr. C.C. Lewis. He would always try to talk to me about, you know, furthering your education. You need, don't just stop at your undergrad, get your grad. And he wanted me to get my doctorate. 
And he says, working for your community is the best and most rewarding experience you can have in any job there is because you see the change before your eyes. You're able to provide a resolution if possible to a constituent. So I landed in local government because of the people around me who loved the community in which they live. And then the other opportunity is Dr. Cece would often say, Chesterfield needs more minorities and you need to be one of those in, 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 in those offices. So my journey in Chesterfield County was because of the community, but it was a shift because I was a corporate America driven girl. Now I'm public service, local government all the way. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's interesting to listen to, to Kim's story. And I think her story is similar to, to many of us that we kind of fell into local government. You know, I know very few people that say, I, when I grew up, I want to I want to be a deputy county administrator or I want to be a park and recreation director or I want to be whatever position it is, um, you know, in the local government, you know, county manager or utility director. I just never heard that. Uh, very few people I know that um, go that route. So like Kim, I kind of fell into um, local government as well. Actually, when I when I graduated uh, from high school, um, I went on to pursue a degree, um, had a partial scholarship, um, I was going to be a teacher. Um, and so, you know, at University of North Carolina in Greensboro, you actually student taught your, your sophomore and your senior year, which was probably a good thing because during my sophomore year, I remember I was student teaching um, fourth grade and I was going to be an elementary ed um, teacher. And I was te I was student teaching fourth grade math. And so I'm 10 years older than my sister. And my sister was also, she was in fourth grade at the time. I remember telling her that I was teaching fourth grade math. So I knew what she was, what she was doing in school. So I was threatening her. I, I, I can make sure that, um, you know, if you're not doing good, I'm going to know it because I know this, I know the material. So you can't hide uh, from me. And so we, we giggle and laugh about that until today. But um, I know something that happened in um, while student teaching and being in the, in the classroom and, I love working with with the kids and the youth, but I realized um, during the semester that I want to do a little bit more. I want to, I enjoy working with people with disabilities. I enjoy working with the students I had. I want to be in a career that I could work with um, several different populations um, and not just be in the classroom on a daily basis. Because I mean, I had a I had a I had a whole um, layout of you know teaching for two years and going into um, administration and then eventually become the superintendent of the school district. That's, that's kind of what I was mapping out when I was in college. And of course, um, that derailed when I realized I didn't want to teach <laughs> on a, on a full-time basis. And so I landed, you know, finishing my degree and actually changed my major from education. And I, I landed into, after I researched and found out about recreational therapy and became a therapist and realized that I could work with all these different populations, um, and, and then I ended up getting a job with Mecklenburg County. Well, actually, excuse me, let me back up, getting a, getting a job with Davidson County and landing in the mental health department as a, um, a day um, outreach therapist. And so that was that was kind of like the, the, the start of working in human services. And I really didn't even know it at the time that uh, that will, you know, project and propel me into where I am today. And after leaving there in Davidson County, moving over to Mecklenburg County, and then the long tenure there in Mecklenburg County for about nine years, um, working with individuals that were homeless that were, of course, had been displaced and working um, as a therapist to, you know, use in recreation treatment as a treatment modality um, to help with things like um, social isolation, anxiety, um, you know, anything you can think of, you know, it's, it's a lot that children go through when they go to school um, in the day and then they have to go home, their home is going back to the shelter. Um, you know, and, and other kids are going to houses. So, um, you know, there's a lot of emotional, psychological support that's needed. And recreation was a good outlet for me to work with these children um, in that regard. And of course, in my career um, moved into management and the positions I, told, I talked about earlier. Um, so that's kind of how I landed in local government, but didn't go to school to say that's what I'm going to do um, directly. That's awesome. So that's always fascinating to hear how you got here and what drew you to this field. So thank you both for sharing. Um, and 
if others that are listening, because we're going to transition to some more of your initiatives related to DE&I for the county. But before we do that, if someone was interested in learning more about opportunities in county government, where can they go for more information? So they can certainly go to um, chesterfieldcounty.gov, um, which gives you a plethora of um, information inside our county website, chesterfieldcounty.gov. And you can click on um, and learn about different commissions that you can be, uh, be on and, and serve in volunteer capacities. You can learn about all the different departments um, that we have, not just human services, but in all departments in the county. And there's just so much information that you could take some time and take days to, to thumb, thumb through the website to, to learn about more. But more directly, you can certainly reach out to Kim and I. Um, and Kaisha, I don't know if you, you want us to provide our direct numbers, 704-748. Um, I'm sorry, you know what? I'm not in, this is this is the wrong county. Let's apologize hey. for that. Uh, 804, <laughs> yeah, 804. I might not give you a good wrong area code. So um, 804 is an area code, 748-1212. Um, that's my office line, 804-748-1212. And we are happy to uh, you know, answer questions and, and call back or whatever, whatever we can do to support. That's one of the things that we um, promote um, is is um, giving back and mentoring others that are interested in this field. Um, Kim has over 30 years uh, working in local government, um, and I have over 20 years working in local government. So um, together, we're a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And I'll <laughs> add my phone number to that as well, 804-748-1567, 804-748-1567. And I would also encourage, um, the county has um, happening in Chester Chesterfield, I encourage um, residents to always connect and um, register to be a part of that. You hear, you see what's going on, what's the, what the county's doing, how you can volunteer, how you can learn more about the awards or initiatives that the county may um, be a part of or approved, and as well as positions, like when we're hiring. So definitely connect. And on social media, we have social media sites. Our um, uh, constituent and media services always want us to Put, put a plug in if um, there's a social media graphic, there's something going on in the county. They do a fabulous job with sharing what's happening in Chesterfield. Um, that's one of our one of our priorities for Dr. Casey is to just to like make sure that we're communicating with our residents. So if you can't find it that way, definitely reach out to Dr. Worsley and I, and we'll definitely get you connected. That's awesome. That's awesome. So as we transition our next topic, we I would love for you to share with us what are some of the key initiatives of DE&I that the county is focused on? And can you share with us each of your roles in this initiative? Well, let me give, let me just kind of um, kickstart this off and then I'll turn it over to Kim because the county has been doing um, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, for quite some time, and, and it, it predates me and it goes back many, many, many years, particularly in our HR department. Um, and I think uh, much was more of an internal focus. And in 2020, um, the our board, our Chesterfield County Board of Supervisors, um, under their leadership, um, created uh, a position where, where it is now known as Kim's position with the DEI focus as the coordinator that we know today. Um, create that position to have not only an internal, but a more outwardly focused as well with the DEI initiatives that Kim is going to talk about in just a little bit. And so um, that created position that Kim has today and placed it under um, my portfolio. And so we've been partnered together uh, since 2022 to work on um, DEI work in Chesterfield County and, and across the region. And, and I'm happy that you know Kim's on board to, to do that. And she's had an additional promotion since um, along the way as well as becoming the assistant director of um, what is now community engagement and resources. And so um, we're really thrilled about that. But that kickstarts this initiative. But I, I want to just let people know the work of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion did not just start in 2020. Um, there has been work that has been going on for a number of years through our diversity advisory councils um, that was in the HR department and that permeates through very uh, many other departments around the county as well. Um, but more direct focus, certainly um, with Kim being in her in her role now, we've we've seen 
um, so much more uh, happen out early in uh, and interfacing with the community and being more intentional in our engagement and putting what we are already doing in a plan that Kim's going to tell you a little bit more about um, as well to let others know that, you know, we are doing it, but now we want to also show you what we have done, what we are doing, and what we intend to do in the future as well. So with that being said, uh, Kim, that's kind of a, a preempt to let you move forward with uh, telling us a little bit more about the uh, DEI work uh, that we've been doing in Chesterfield County. Thank you, Dr. Worsley. Hi, Shay, I'm so excited um, to have this opportunity to be a longstanding uh, employee of Chesterfield County, but just to be a part of the initiative to enhance and um, expand the diversity initiatives that county, the Chesterfield County has been doing for a number of years. This predates me, right? Um, just the county is just one organization that has been forward thinking for since the 80s. You know, when you talk about women in leadership positions, creating opportunities for diversity programs, creating programs for the community like Black History Month celebrations. Chesterfield County has been on the cutting edge for a number of years. We're in a place now while we were focused on um, the workforce and what was going on in the workforce. We want to also continue the relationship of being reflective of our community. And I'm so excited that the Board, board of Supervisors and Dr. Casey, along with um, our county leadership and Dr. Worsley, said, Let's let's shift a little bit and make sure that we share with the community what we've been doing all of these years because people only see bits and pieces of it. But let's put it together in a plan. It's awesome. I'm fortunate enough to work with a leadership team that um it's not just one person, Kim Conley or Dr. Worsley, it's collectively everyone that's working towards this effort. We were fortunate enough to present to the Board of Supervisors last um, month regarding um the diversity, equity, inclusion strategic plan. We will, the board will approve this plan that I will share with you um, in this month, July. So we have just really worked hard with our HR director and the diversity, equity, inclusion council to really be intentional about what Chesterfield County has been doing and how do we continue to move the needle as we move forward? And how can our community be a part of us moving that needle? And in saying that, we tag ourselves by saying, building unity and creating opportunities. This is what we do. We want that flavor. Um, as when you drive the borders of Chesterfield County, we want everybody to feel that same message, that atmosphere, that, that ambience. Chesterfield County wants to build community. They want to build unity and they want to create opportunities. And this is what our plan will em it embraces that inclusive community feeling, where we're working with our community partners, whether it's the chamber, whether it's the um, our faith-based community, um, nonprofits. Dr. Worsley even mentioned that he initiated a, a human services nonprofit collaborative, where we bring all the nonprofits together. Chesterfield is on the, on the cutting edge, continuing to move forward. And I will share with you that the vision of our plan is to be an inclusive and resilient community that connects engages and inspires all people. Awesome. Dr. Casey has made this a priority. It's one of his top priorities that we continue to make sure that we are an inclusive community. And we wanna draw upon experiences, strengths, opportunities that the county may continue to educate. This is another tagline we use. Advocate and celebrate a diverse and engaged multicultural community. So we're doing all of these things. We're just now packaging it in a plan so that our community can be a part of what we're doing. The mission for our strategic plan is to foster a sense of inclusive inclusion, respect, and support for building relationships, partnerships with everyone. Can't get any better than that. We're, we do that. We're doing that. We're for fostering relationships. But we want to make sure that we're expanding and that everyone in, the, in our community when you move to Chesterfield, you know who to call. We connect you in our department or Dr. Worsley's our department. We're connecting you, but we also want you to feel like you're included. And how to do that, but making sure that our plan makes sure that our employees and our community feel inclusive. The goal, we have three goals. It was, and we decided that this plan would be a short-term plan initially to, to make sure that we are uh, tap, reaching the, the, the marks, the metrics that we need to. 
So we had three goals and I'll share with you those three goals. The three goals are increase community engagement. We do that. We want to do it even better than what we're doing today. And, and we're doing that by engaging with the community to assist people in feeling connected, valued, and heard. The county does that by creating opportunities through um, listening, to engage with, to learn from various community groups, whether it's town hall meetings, whether you're inviting Dr. Worsley or Dr. Dr. Casey to come out to your meetings. Today is an example of how we are, are creating the opportunity for our community to listen. And we thank you for the opportunity to do that. And then in addition to that, it's coordinating and promoting events. You heard me say, educate first, advocate second, and then celebrate. We really focus on those three. And, I, and Dr. Worsley, I call him our um, champion ambassador of diversity, equity, and inclusion. He can do this in his sleep. He sleeps and he walks and he, he makes sure that make sure that we are accountable to our community and there's an open door, open communication policy at all times. So we, we appreciate Dr. Worsley's vision for making sure that we stay engaged with our community. The second goal is to serve people in a culturally competent manner. And how do we do that? Provide county services in a culturally sensitive and respectful manner. We do this by making sure that our employees are trained. We have training sessions. We make sure that we connect with other organizations that maybe provide diversity training and making sure that our employees have the opportunity to attend sessions. Our community um, facing departments, we really work with them. We're even fortunate to have departments that have their own diversity and inclusion subcommittees. You can't get any better than that, that we really want the DNA of Chesterfield County to be that we are a diverse community. And we're doing that. Dr. Worsley is constantly, he's, he's training us within our division. He's sharing it in, in our leadership meetings of how important it is that we are culturally sensitive to our community, that our customer service is, a, is a far, on par when you're dealing with all walks of life within Chesterfield County and, and providing, everybody has an equal opportunity and everybody has a voice. And our plan and our goal, number two, shares that. Goal three, to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion successfully. And how do we do that? Educate, advocate, and then we're gonna celebrate. And we look at that by fostering and encouraging community participation in our governance practices. Dr. Worsley mentioned um, checking on our website for boards and commissions. One of the things we want to make sure that our um, board of supervisors has the opportunity to appoint our community members to various committees and commissions. We review that on a regular basis. We connect with leadership in our community. We help promote these opportunities because we want our boards and commissions to be with commissions to be reflective of our community. How best to learn and understand what we're doing is to be a part of the process. Yes. We also, um, I will share that we have um, academies within the county. Within my department, I have we have Government Citizens Academy and we have My Chesterfield Academy. But in police and fire, they also have academies as well. But those are other opportunities to really learn about the county, get to know about your community, and get to know about the government's process. So we really stress, you don't have to necessarily speak at a meeting because people are very shy sometimes, but come and hear what's going on. And we wanna make sure that it's an inclusive opportunity that we're including everyone in that process. So we want to be able to promote diversity after inclusion in all that we do. And that um, goal three will allow us to do that. And part of goal three, and you heard me say this when I talked about me, is building trust in our community. Dr. Casey often shares when he's speaking to different groups, you come to us and share with us what you need. We want to build your trust. You, we have an open door policy. So building trust with our community, regardless of what community you come from, you can pick up the phone and call us and we will be a listening ear and we're gonna to try to help resolve an issue for as much as we can within our parameters. So building trust, having the open door policy, communicating with our community, with our leaders, is very key to the success of this strategic plan. And I will say the connection of not only the leadership and our workforce, but the leadership and the community coming together on a regular basis. We do that more frequently than at night, but we want to do more of that. So when you talk about this plan, strategic plan, we want to what? Build unity, 
and create opportunities. And we're gonna do that in the next two to three years, even more so with those three goals where I just talked about. One is increase our community engagement. Two would be to serve people in a culturally competent manner. And three would be to promote diversity, equity, inclusion, and successful place. And that's where we come together, be it our board of supervisors, our county executive leadership with Dr. Worsley as our champion, our ambassador for DEI. But I also would, I'd be remiss if I didn't share that. Mary Martin Selby, who's our HR director, has been very intricate in the whole process. Prior to me coming to work for Chesapeake County in the workforce and making sure that our workforce is diverse and inclusion, inclusive to whether it's protocols, whether it's procedures, you know, whether it's just having a voice and making sure that that is happening. But she is also one in which Dr. Worsley could, you know, works along with to make sure that both we're looking at externally, but we're looking internally and we're mirroring together. So it's not one working in silo. It's both together. It's and we're doing it together. And I'm so proud to Chesterfield County to We've been so many different, we had Juneteenth celebration. We do Black History Month. We do multicultural um, sessions. We connect with many organizations, our Asian partners, you know, just a number of organizations that we want to continue to broaden them. And this diversity, equity, and inclusion strategic plan will allow us to do that even more. So we welcome feedback. We're going to have some community conversations. We're going to have some community roundtables. And we're going to look for some of our community to be a part of our small groups as we work to build a more cohesive um, community in Chesapeake County. That's awesome. Congratulations. I feel the excitement. I see the energy. Dr. Worsley was smiling and I saw him nodding his head. So kudos for the work that was done previously. Kudos for the work that's in progress and kudos for your three goals. And I heard the power of this team working together to make this move forward and the champions you have around the table, so to speak, in the county. So I want to wrap up with my final question for you. And I'm very excited, so I can't wait to hear more. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna stay connected with you all and you've shared how anyone can contact you, which is awesome. So I want to say thank you for joining today with Growing Perspectives with Kaisha. As we wrap up, what is one final thing you'd like to share with us that we may not have covered, um, that you want to share with us? And it could also be something that's most rewarding about working in county government. So mm -hmm. I will leave either one as our final question before we end today. Mm -hmm. Kaisha, let me just say thank you for um, the platform. Thank you for your perspectives and the work that you do for the community because you're everywhere. You're presenting all the time. You're working with folks. Um, I see you all across LinkedIn and Facebook. And, um, and you know, not only are you a, a powerhouse when it comes to a business owner in our community, but you're also um, from the face from your Facebook post, I can tell that you're a very family oriented, a, a, uh, a wonderful wife, a, a loving mother. From your, your your kids, I see away at college, and you're you're there and you're everywhere. So thank you for for for, for your work in the community as well, and being so dynamic uh, as a, a family um, a, a family first person as well as a business owner in the community. I think that is phenomenal to be able to juggle such a busy schedule and do it effortlessly. Thank you. Um, so the one thing I would say um, as as kind of final and parting, parting words uh, for those that may not know a lot about local government, um, it's not it's not as scary as some may think it, it, it is. Um, you know, there may be some per, uh, perceived notions, I say, or misconceptions. So get to know people. You know, we don't mind. We'd love for somebody to come in shadow, see what we do. We love to get invited to spaces uh, that we may not have been invited before so that we can uh, share uh, more information about what we do. And oftentimes when we do that, people generally tell us, oh, I didn't know um, that Chesterfield County offered this service or, um, you know, this was an opportunity as a career for me. You know, if you're talking to someone perhaps that's graduated from high school, graduating high school, even college. So, you know, we, we love those opportunities. We have a speakers bureau. Um, in Chesterfield County as well. That is, again, is on the website and people can 
uh, make application um, through a web form. If they want someone from Chesterfield County to come and speak on a particular topic, uh, we have a speakers bureau that we are happy to um, to share with, with the public and come out and match people up. Um, we, we have all sorts of opportunities in Chesterfield County. So I'm just excited. It's a great, a great place to, to work. Um, you know, I've, I work for uh, a, a few different places and certainly is, uh, this is a place that you can certainly tell that there's a lot of teamwork, camaraderie um, amongst um, those that um, work in Chesterfield County, very family centric, family atmosphere. Uh, so if people are um, toweling and trying to figure out if, you know, they want to make application to Chesterfield County, there are usually uh, lots of positions and a variety of positions that are open um, on our on our website that people can apply for. Um, it is a great place to work to, um, and certainly uh, benefits um, matched a great place to work as well. So again, thank you for your time today and we will extend the invitation to you at any point you want to come um, to Chesterfield County uh, government and, and tour Taisha or and learn more too. We invite you here as well. Thank you. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Taisha. I appreciate the opportunity to just share our journey to share where we're going, but I would just, my one last thing, thank you for your partnership and relationship, and we look forward to working more closely with you and your roles. But I would also, I would also share with the community to say, connect with us, connect with us. As we continue to uh, move on this journey and embark upon enhancing this journey, connect with your local government. We are here for you. We are listening here, and I think it's important that you connect and network with us and learn as much as you can about your community, because we can only be as strong as our community. So I say connect with us and learn more about what's happening and be a part of, be a part of the journey. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you both again. And the message was loud and clear. Connect with us. And I look forward to staying connected with both of you. And thank you again for being fantastic guests and for all you do in the community. So have a great day and we will be talking again soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you.